Hello everyone and welcome to this new video. Today we will see how to build an oscilloscope using Raspberry Pi and the Qt framework. Before starting, I invite you to subscribe to the channel so as to contribute to the creation of new content. The potentiometer you see is used to simulate a variable voltage that is being read by the analog converter. It is clear how the voltage noise is displayed when I touch the rear fours of the potentiometer with my finger. Just as in an oscilloscope it is possible to adjust the time scale by modifying the number of samples to be displayed on the x-axis and thus obtaining a zoom. It is also possible to modify the amplitude of the signal by acting on the y-axis. The purpose of the video is not to create a real oscilloscope, which would need very complex hardware for conditioning the analog input signals, but to show how to use the Qt libraries to create real-time graphs. We will then create a QML-based user interface application and see how to use the libraries to implement a system that reads data and displays it on a graph. I remind you that in order to develop Qt applications on Raspberry you need to configure the toolchain. If you haven't already done so, you can go and watch the video indicated in the description which explains step by step what to do. To begin with let's see what we need. A Raspberry Pi. Version 4 is used in the video but version 3 can also be used. A touchscreen display. The one used is the official Raspberry 7-inch capacitive touchscreen display. The Qt Framework. An oscilloscope simply reads analog voltages to display trends over time on the screen. But a problem arises. Raspberry Pi has no analog inputs. So how to solve this problem? We need to add a system which can convert an analog signal to a digital one. In this video, we will analyze two different solutions. The first involves the use of an external digital analog converter connected to Raspberry, for example via I2C bus. The second uses a system such as Arduino or ESP32, already equipped with an analog to digital converter and connected to Raspberry via USB cable. As an external digital analog converter we will use the ADS1115 chip which can also be found in the form of a card to be inserted on the Raspberry connector. The video uses this chip that I had already used in the project, Raspberry Tablet, that you can see on my channel. The chip is connected to the Raspberry using the I2C bus then via the SDA and SCL pins and is powered at 5 volts. To use the external ADC remember to enable the I2C bus in the Raspberry configuration.
The other solution involves the use of an ESP32 connected via USB. In practice we will use one of the analog inputs of the ESP32 to read a voltage, convert it into digital and send it via USB to Raspberry. The source code used for the ESP32 is the same as the serial communication video that you can see on my channel. In the sketch, we continuously read the voltage on one of the ESP32 pins and using a communication protocol we send the data to the Raspberry via USB. But let's see now in practice how the Qt application works. We can choose the data source. From an external converter or from serial protocol via USB. A thread collects data from one of two sources and stores it in a fixed length queue of 1000 samples. Every 100 samples arrived, the displayed curve is updated. Let's now analyze the structure of the Qt application. In the configuration file of the project it is necessary to add the support to the Serlaport and charts libraries. In main all classes and threads are initialized and the connections defined. You need to create a background image for the oscilloscope screen. It is a simple PNG image created with paint. The frame class is the one used in the management of data coming from the USB via serial protocol, and it is the same used in the previous video of serial communication. The sample worker is the class that takes care of collecting the samples coming from the analog to digital converter via the I2C bus or from USB via the serial protocol. The collected samples are then inserted into a queue managed by the data source class. The set source function is used to select one of two data sources. And here is the thread collecting the samples. The displayed curve is updated whenever the number of samples is a multiple of the selectable refreshed points variable as we will see on the user interface. Graphically, the interface consists of a single view defined in the main.qml file. The rectangle that defines the chart with the chart view object inside it. The range slider object is used to adjust the minimum and maximum value on the Y axis.
The time base rectangle displays all the buttons for setting the x-axis range. And finally, the data source rectangle allows you to select the data source. 